Well folks, in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to wire up a reversing loop. Now in this particular case the reversing loop has actually already been constructed, uh, the reversing loop being this bridge which allows trains to now come off the main line, come up here, around here, and turn around and continue onward. Now the most crucial thing in building a reversing loop is having an isolated section of track. Um, in this case it's most of the track on this bridge. Uh, and the isolation begins right here, and it ends over here. Both rails need to be completely isolated um, because uh, when you change the polarity, uh, it would cause shorts if you had a common rail. So uh, whole track needs to be completely isolated, but in exchange for isolating the whole track, you need to, of course, uh, deliver power to it through a special uh, system which allows you to change the polarity of the track while the train is going through the isolated section. So I'm going to show you guys how. So to create a reversing loop, you need a very small switch which has two inputs and one output. Basically what it does is it reverses the polarity of the current in the track, uh, allowing your train to continue going forwards when you change the direction on your controller. Now I could go out to the hardware store and buy one of these switches, but I don't have enough time, money, and resources to go get something like that, so I'm going to need to find one. Unfortunately I don't have any uh, appliances to sacrifice, so I guess I don't really know what to do, except this. It's already broken. You can see Tyco put these uh, pressure fit uh, screws basically in place to prevent people from opening the unit up. Uh, real cute on their part. Unfortunately, uh, my drill doesn't think so. See, there's still a couple brackets, so we're gonna need to remove those to get inside. All they're really doing is slowing down the inevitable. So I've got that bracket out, so now we can actually open this up. That's what's uh, inside a Tyco controller, I guess. You can see right there, i got the high resistance metal there. And I included this probably as a safety feature, so if something like this touches the case, uh, it doesn't become electrified with however much power's there. And there's our rectifier, and there is the thing we want, which is our switch. So we're going to need to figure out a way. I could just drill behind it and probably get it out that way. Yeah, I think I'll get it out like that. All right. Not all this crap is... Oh, it's the things that were inside. There's one. We didn't just destroy it. Metal kind of snagged. That cross right there is what changes the current. Let me get my wire cutters. Couldn't find some. I got something a bit tougher. This thing doesn't care what's in its way. Yeah, there we go. There's our switch. So we've got, um, well, that just broke off, but basically we're going to put uh, an input from each current in and the ones in the middle go out. To wire this thing up, we're gonna use this wire I got in that lot. Uh, as you can see, this is actually multiple wires. I think there are five of them. Anyways, this should be long enough, I think, to do what uh, I have in mind. So this right here is the back of the switch, and what's going on back here is actually some really genius design. You see, uh, the switch has 
uh, two inputs, which are the outer ones, and one output, which is the middle one. Uh, now, without this little crisscross wire, you would need to wire up uh, two input wires to reverse the polarity. What this does is, of course, if you flip the wires around, it reverses the polarity already. So you just need to connect two leads from your power source. It flips them, so if you have it set this way, it takes the reversed power, puts it out this way, or if you have it this way, it just takes the regular power, brings it up here, and puts it out through the middle. So we're gonna wire it up now. Uh, I have these leads from the wire, they're all tinted. I removed the fifth wire because we only need four. I'm gonna hook up the uh, two, the red and the black wire basically to the uh, outer uh, ones. Those are gonna be our two track wires. So we're gonna wire those up to the track. There's one. Didn't get enough good, good enough ball in that time. There's one. Three. And the last one should be. Here we go. Four. Now I've got the uh, yellow and blue wires going to the uh, isolated section of track. And those now go to our little control. And then we've got the track feeder wires connected up to this. These are just, uh, uh, this wire eventually leads to my track. It's no different than hooking these wires up to track. So uh, we've now got it all wired up. This is obviously not a finished project. It's just uh, an example to uh, show how it all works. So the concept is basically got the isolated section of track on the same type of current that's on your track that you're entering on. But then while it enters the isolated section, you stop the train, you flip the direction of the current, uh, which now allows it to continue forward. But since you've switched the direction of the current, your train is now gonna go backwards. So while it's on that section, you also need to change the direction on your controller. But once you do this, you can continue through. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna run our train onto the bridge and I'm gonna show you uh, what exactly happens. So we're going to proceed forwards and we stop the train in the middle, switch the direction, and we flip the direction on our controller, and as you can see the train proceeds. And if we back her up, stop the train, flip it again. Switch this again. Continues on. So now I'll show you what would happen if I just tried to go straight through without switching it. So we accelerate forward. Now it should make it onto this section of track, but watch this. I mean, see it shorts out right there. You saw how it backed up. And that's because it reached an opposite uh, section of track. So we're going to take it off that to prevent the short from happening. I'm not going to show the train actually turning around. So just as before, we're going to drive her onto the isolated section. Flip the direction. Flip it again. And you can see it's going to come around. Now you'll notice when we sent it off, uh, the back was pointed out towards the camera and now we have the front of the locomotive. Now, if we switch this so it aligns, and we now back the train in, and we stop right there, and we flip the direction. And we let it go and make a full turn around. As you remember, we just had the head of the locomotive and we have the back end of the locomotive. And you can just keep doing this all day basically and uh, keep reversing your train there.
And there's the head of it again. I think you guys probably get the concept. And if you want to do something kind of silly, you can work the switch kind of into the middle area, just like so. And uh, I'm going to be using my DC controller. It doesn't make any difference. The only reason I'm using my DC controller is because it's the only controller powerful enough to pull off this maneuver. I also have an Atherin engine, which just happens to have a really big flywheel. Watch this. As you can see, it just did an entire reverse without stopping. Now, this is just a very fun thing you can do. Uh, but if we have an engine with a really strong flywheel, uh, there's enough energy that it can kind of just coast over the bridge without any power. And by putting in neutral, you make the rails on the bridge completely dead of power. So uh, that's one thing you can do. While it was going over the bridge, I quickly flipped the direction. Otherwise, it would have reached the end and just stalled, probably gone backwards a little bit. But that's just a fun thing I noticed. So that's something cool about these Atherin engines.